Hey, camera girl. Hey, camera girl. <laughs> oh, she's so sweet. Uh, I thought I'd just turn the camera on again real quick here. We're coming down to the, to the end here, and I was charging my system with oil, and I've mentioned this several times, but I don't know if I've really given a close-up look of my pre-start procedure. You can, <clears throat> we have lubricant, special lubricant on the cam for the break-in. My rocker arm assemblies are not on at all. And <clears throat> I've got this refrigeration pump. This is just the way we used to use it when I did HVAC work. If you have a system that's under pressure, you don't want to get any non-condensables in there or air in the system. So you can use this type of a pump and pump oil into a system that's low that has leaked oil and chances are if it's leaked oil it's leaked refrigerant too. I could tell you stories that make your hair stand up. The things we used to do with refrigerant and before it was such an environmental issue. You could, we used to chill our beer with it. Just take a, take a, jug of R12 and have a hose on it and blast your beer for a few seconds <laughs> got it all frosted up <laughs> yeah anyhow <clears throat> stay on track Greg <clears throat> so this is not an expensive gauge it's just I wanted to put the T in now and see how everything fit I have a a glycerin filled gauge that I ran for a long time on that one doesn't do you any good when you're driving but you can put your sending unit in the back of the T it goes to 100 pounds that's not going to be accurate I'm going to reconnect this gauge which is a refrigeration gauge which is very accurate and I'm just using these refrigeration hoses with these uh, adapters that are 8 inch pipe thread and basically I don't know if I can do this one-handed. When you pull the pull it up, it it fills the tube, and then you push it down. Okay, there's one. I already had it up to like just below the. See the gauge, the needle move there a little bit. <clears throat> so I am putting oil down the main and wherever the loosest place is <laughs> that's where the oil is coming out hopefully it's getting into the crankshaft connecting rods the main galley and all that sort of thing and by doing it this way <clears throat> I'm not rotating the engine and wiping all my break-in lube off the camshaft I have the stuff I might as well use it so just something that I came up with I wouldn't run out and buy one of these pumps they're kind of expensive this has worked for me for years not on this setup but I filed a little groove in here it's rigid I don't think this would work on a, a normal sedan on a normal sedan I would run the the hoses and put the filter in the fender well behind the left rear tire on the bumper bracket. If you have a car like that and get underneath there, you'll, you'll know and see what I mean. And I have videos of my 66 that's that way. So make sure the hoses aren't touching, rubbing, gonna get burnt. Um, this is special high pressure tubing. It's not fun to work with. <laughs> Believe me, it's not fun to work with. I'm um, using AN fittings because that way I don't <clears throat> normally like to use the hose ends and you put a clamp around it. I think this is just a neater, simpler way and, and your doesn't damage your hoses and when you want to take them off and move them, you can. So just my personal opinion. What can I tell you? Well, just I want to get this thing started. I'm tired of monkeying around with it. I just want to get this cam break in over with. 
I'll have a lot more peace of mind just getting the cam brake in over with. I uh, still have my spark plugs out. I need to uh, set my timing on that. I do a static timing where I'll hook a, uh, put a spark plug in here and set at number one at 12 degrees. That's where I like to set my static timing and then I'll rotate the distributor until I see the spark plug spark. Bam, it's done. Well, I'm glad to get that over with. <coughs> I apologize for all the glare. I thought it was the garage door being open, but my shop lights are right above this, and I guess the angles and stuff are right. <coughs> I just shut it off. <coughs> I thought I'd go around and, and take some temps, see if I can do a better job of that. Block temp is uh, 181. Head temp at the bale, 195 on that one. <coughs> Sorry about this coffin. 188, that's a match. One seventy four. <coughs> yeah, getting old sucks. And 184, that's pretty good. Uh, oil cooler, let's see, right on the base of it, like 150. <coughs> I must say, I wasn't really impressed with my running temperature oil pressure when it first started up. Uh, it was up 50 or so, and I could see the oil relief valves opening and closing by watching the needle. A lot of times when you're, uh, you don't see that with these electric ones and if you got a long tube going to the back you won't see that kind of sensitivity. But uh, when you've got them mounted right on, I don't know, I was surprised that the, that little gauge was pretty dang close to the refrigeration gauge. Um, what else do we want to take temperatures of? Uh, I know a lot of people probably would not do it this way. You don't want to tighten this enough to collapse your pipe. And you, yes, you are going to transfer some heat into the oil cooler. Um, 
this whole exhaust system isn't going to stay on here, but it was quiet enough. Uh, I didn't want to bug my neighbors and scare my dog. She seemed to <laughs> enjoy the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, let her cool down now and dump the oil and uh, start uh, making plans to... Uh, I, I gotta take that deep sump off and replace the gasket there. I wasn't gonna leave this oil in here. Um, some people just change the oil filter and then take it easy and cut open their oil filter and leave that break-in oil in there. And I'll put some of this uh, Brad Penn break-in oil, the green oil. And I used... Uh, Actually, what I used was this. It was hard to find conventional oil. I just found some of this at Walmart Supertech 10W30. And, yeah, it's a soup mix. I've been using uh, Lucas products for a long time, the TB Zinc Plus. But I was just going through my stuff, and I had this Brad Penn oil left over from another project. And uh, so I thought, well, why not use it? It seems like every thing on this build, it's so much easier to rebuild a motor that ran with the parts that were working before. And you could compare them to the uh, two of the head bolts were too long on each side. I had to shorten those by about four threads and cut a screwdriver slot in the top of that. The distributor did not seem to want to work and I had this uh, I just took left the wires on and had this Bosch cap so I don't know why this cap didn't work but uh, I hope I didn't ruin my cam because it uh, took a while to get it started and finally I set it at top dead center and I took a, a spark pl a brand new spark plug and run gauges and clamps to it Made sure I was on number one, took the cap off, checked the rotor, set it at top dead center at 12 degrees, which is where I generally like to uh, run up here at this altitude. And then I turned my distributor until I saw a spark at the spark plug. And you can hear it tick inside the distributor as well. Um, I will say that the uh, it has... Yeah, I guess I could take that off. It does have um, brass contacts in there. Now I should have the light back on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's not too bad looking, but the O-ring that comes with it is not what you want to use. And, let's see, what was I going to show you? Everything's so hot. Including that! <laughs> the... The points, I did not have to file the points, and I have this old meter here, and I was well into the middle of the green for my point resistance. These are old school tools. <laughs> uh, guys my age recognize them, I'm sure. This is probably something I got at Sears. Uh, it's probably a Craftsman. But, yeah, still works. Um, my timing light, however, gave up. And uh, I bought a, a Bosch plastic one uh, a few years ago, and it didn't last very long. <laughs> oh. Make sure I have everything up there. But, uh, yeah, a lot of new parts. New coil, new distributor, um, new engine case. I reused the pistons and cylinders and the rotating assembly. These are used heads that were on my 2 liter for a couple of years. Stock valve heads. Uh, I'm anxious to take it back to uh, Heartbreak Hill. But we, it's still pretty cold and that's still up in the foothills high enough. This is, uh, hasn't been that long since I had that big snow. It was to, almost to the bottom of the street light where I had it piled up. So it's melting off nicely a week later. 
the dog really likes just sitting outside and she didn't seem to she stayed just like that when I started the engine she doesn't she's got the slowest metabolism she's got a heart rate I checked her heart rate it was like 70 and that's with her at rest on the couch uh, messing around um, like I said earlier I'm not going to be running this exhaust system unless I put it in the car and my goal is at some point to try some heater boxes with this we'll see how this pulls on the hill and what else have we got planned here um I may you know if it doesn't perform similar or you know better than the two liter I may put the big valve heads on it these are not large exhausts and these are 36 Delordo carburetors with 30 millimeter Venturi's in them box stock just the way I bought them 30 years ago I had uh, 34 ICT Webers on a 1776 on my very first sand rail that I bought from somebody else and they the throttle shafts were so loose on those things the bushings were wore out it, it whistled it kind of sounded like a turbo and these have worked fine um, I thought I had the infamous drip but uh, seems like it was a, a, a bad float and I've I've had to do things to them accelerator pumps and uh, but I never had to change the jets and I I've, I've taken these engines of mine up to you know 10,000 feet I've drove, driven this tow buggy over through Rocky Mountain National Park to Granby which is uh, it's supposed to be the highest paved road in the United States I don't know if that still stands but I think it goes over 14,000 feet and car starts and runs okay it's there's a little thin there you can seems like feel like a loss of power but and then I've taken it with the same setup down to the Glamis sand dunes in California near Yuma Arizona and I didn't have to make any jet changes and it, you definitely could feel more power with the seat of the pants meter um, I'm just BSing here I'm so relieved to cut <laughs> to get to this point oh this thing has been I've learned a lot I've learned a lot I I want to complain about everything that was aftermarket on this thing but it doesn't do any good and it is what it is and if you're not prepared to deal with it I really strongly suggest if you're just entering into this sport get yourself the stock 1600 and take it apart clean it inspect the bearings try to do a minimal type of overhaul um, before you move up to these stroker motors because the everything changes you know the rocker arm geometry the the head the compression man there's so many things to be checking and watching and looking for and it's uh, um, it's a lot of work there's so many assemblies and pre-trials and correcting things everything this is there's no way you're gonna just go buy one of these uh, stroker kits and ready to assemble <laughs> that is not nope and if I now that it's running I, I might uh, I did save the footage of when I got this stuff last summer and if I can I gotta think of my own personal liability when you discuss different products and maybe the service that you got and I don't want to be that guy that just shoots off his mouth and then people start repeating things that I say and and you know you know how that old game was when you you uh, sit around a circle and when you were in elementary school and the teacher whispers something to the first student or 
has it written on a piece of paper and gives it to the first student and then they keep the, the teacher takes the paper back but each kid whispers in the next kid's ear and when it comes around to the other hand it's it's sometimes totally different than what it started off with so I gotta watch for that and uh, it uh, but I, I really think all of us in the aftermarket the user the end user we need to crack down on all the suppliers and make sure that they're not sending us junk I mean so much stuff that you know there's the freight involved and shipping involved it's like plan a vacation go there in person inspect the stuff before you buy it or buy something that's already built and already running and there's a lot of sand cars that come up for sale now that these side-by-sides have hit the sand and the trails and um, so there's there's some real high performance stuff up there really cheap because most of them need race fuel and stuff like that and they're they're race engines and uh, I, I'm telling you <laughs> everybody thinks they want more power but th this is why I have separate vehicles you know, you build an engine, you can't have one engine that just does everything perfectly well. you got to sacrifice something. If you want to do race quarter mile or eighth mile, whatever that is, and it, who cares on that? It's all bracket racing anyhow. Nobody does head-to-head. -head. Um, the, um, but it's fun. It, it is fun. And you have little competitions with your friends and so forth. And if you want economy, <laughs> this thing is not going to give economy. I'll be lucky if I get 20 miles to the gallon around town. I'll, I'll, feel, I'll feel real lucky if I get 20 miles to the gallon around town. The the Baja doesn't. Let's, uh, while well, this is still fresh in my mind... <laughs> something wandered through we were looking at that other oil filter setup you see how I put a little uh, metal bracket to move the aluminum housing away from most of the heat there it it works real well I've had this on here like this for years and never had a problem that's power steering hose half inch power steering hose with AN fittings and uh, you just have to be aware, but it's holding up good. I, I've often thought about going to the shop it's, uh, in town, um, tubes and hoses, and they have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, that stainless steel. Boy, that stuff is expensive by the inch, let me tell you. But it takes a beating being out here in the in the weather like this, um, the backwash and the rain. But you know, it just depends on what you want to do. Um, this thing's an aluminum block, and it's a two-liter. That's my favorite. I think after all these years, I can say that's one of my favorite engines. 1776 and the two liter. If I had to pick two out of the pile, I would say 1776 for a 69 crank because everything fits. Uh, I know a lot of people favor those uh, 87s, the no machine, make a 1641 out of it, but it is a thin wall cylinder. But if it works for you and, you know, it, if it starts, uh, if you start using oil and it, it you're losing power or, and you no noticeably it's a couple hundred bucks get some new pistons and cylinders you know um that ain't no big deal and i i would caution people too it you if you're gonna if you're not gonna split the case and inspect the connecting rod and main bearings and do something about that I don't recommend putting new heads and or reconditioning your heads and putting those bigger pistons and cylinders on. It'll run for a while, but it if you have extra tolerances in your rotating assembly, your wrist pins, your connecting rods, your main bearings, your thrust bearing, um, and then you you're 
everything wore together so it all you know it starts losing compression and you know I always want to see one of these race guys that you know they spend all this time on porting heads and stuff like that and it's like well what happens after the carbon builds up the 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 carbon build up on your pistons and head in theory it should be raising the compression because it's a a crusty layer maybe not by much but your ring seal goes away and that's why you get that's why you get puking out of here and you get more crankcase pressure and your engine starts running hotter is because that hot gas from combustion is getting around the the pistons and into the crankcase and it's uh, a problem so it's it's best to to take care of the whole position and to listen to your engine while you're driving and write down as many things as you can because the engines are always talking to you and there's a conversation going on if you can speak the language and it's uh it's just uh keeps you in the game for a lot longer kind of chilly breezy but turned into a nice day now i gotta start finding a place for this stuff the next project is probably going to be putting my 1800 on the stand and that piston that got beat up. I got a friend of mine that uh, has a set of pistons that he's going to bring me and we're going to see if they're the same size or make a decision on that. So we'll just stay tuned for that. So. Sorry for the babble. I'm just, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel like, oh, finally, I didn't sleep well last night. I kept thinking I, I was going to have this thing done. I wanted to have a video posted up for you guys on Friday and just uh, couldn't, couldn't get my stuff together. So, anyhow, thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy. <laughs> Jeezy, out. Hey, baby. Can you say thank you? Huh? Can you say thank you? <laughs> She's a good old girl. She's only two years old. She's had puppies. She doesn't really play much she'll come out in the garage she'll be she lays around in the house and sleeps different favorite places and uh i'll leave the garage door open when it's not messy and there's hot things around and, and uh safe for her to come out and she'll come over and she'll just poke me with her nose or lick me or comes up puts her paw out give me some love i know you're here i just wanted to stop in and check with you all right enough is enough See you on the next one. Easy jeezy out.